and we were all excited. Naomi did maybe one skit and the lights went out. I'm wondering if this has anything to do with the hatred that we got because of the show. But there's at least a narrative connection. We all are awaiting the facts. We aren't the villains in this situation. We have a right to exist. You can't keep telling the same people, oh, it's basic human rights when they don't see you as human. Coming up on The Laura Flanders Show, the place where the people who say it can't be done take a back seat to the people who are doing it. Welcome. It was the biggest domestic terror attack on the U.S. electricity system that most people have never heard of. When the lights went out in Moore County, North Carolina, affecting 45,000 homes and businesses, Sheriff Ronnie Fields, Southern Pines' former mayor, immediately declared it an act of vandalism. But by the next day, that was upgraded to sabotage. The FBI were involved, and by the end of the week, the governor was offering a $75,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. To the perpetrators out there, we will find you. Strong words from the Moore County Sheriff after he says someone shot into power substations, leaving tens of thousands in the dark and cold. The Department of Homeland Security updated its National Threat Assessment Bulletin November 30th, sounding the alarm about the potential for attacks on critical infrastructure. The outages have left the community here scrambling, and power likely won't be restored fully until Thursday. But it's not as if there weren't suspects here. For weeks ahead of the attack, this place, Southern Pines, was up in arms. But not about the insecurity or vulnerability of our electricity grid, rather about a drag show that was happening right here at the Sunrise Theater. In Southern Pines, protesters started rallying and calling for prayer, and counter-protesters started protesting the protesters. No, it was peaceful, signs and chanting and that sort of thing, but it also got heated and angry, and let's not forget about the death threats that came before it. Then, just as the show was getting underway on Saturday, the attack happened. Someone shot the power grid, and that blackout spread across the county. Who's creating safety here, and who most conspicuously is not? And who's a threat to safety? Everyone's. And why does all of this matter so much? We're here in Moore County, North Carolina, to find out. The blackout December 3rd, 2022, affected some Duke Energy customers for five days, causing schools to close, the local hospital to switch to generator power, countless farms and businesses to suffer, and one woman, 87-year-old Karen Zuanelli, who relied on an oxygen machine to die. This August, her death was ruled a homicide caused by the power outage. The attacks follow a pattern that researchers have been concerned about for years. A sniper attack on a Santa Clara substation in California was caught on surveillance cameras in 2013. A report conducted by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission soon after that attack revealed that disabling just a handful of substations could bring down the entire U.S. grid. The years since have seen a dramatic increase in plots targeting electricity systems, especially since the election defeat of Donald Trump. According to the Department of Energy's tracker, suspicious incidents rose 71 percent between 2021 and 2022. Thirteen white supremacists have been indicted in such cases in this period, 11 since 2020 alone. Those include four North Carolinians, including two former Marines, indicted in connection with a grid attack planned by neo-Nazis in 2021, and two others indicted in February 22 on federal charges of plotting to take down substations around Baltimore. The far right has advocated attacks on the grid and other forms of critical infrastructure as a tactic within a framework called accelerationism, which is intended to bring down government and set off a possible race war. Underregulated online platforms such as Telegram allow these ideas to spread. And this includes the so-called Terragram network, which in July 2022 released a graphically illustrated zine called Make It Count, a guide for the 21st century accelerationist. The main thing that keeps the anti-white system going is the power grid, write the authors. Attacking substations, they say is easier than you think. 
The lights went out in Moore County just after the downtown divas show had started at the sunrise. Erica Street, mother of three, including 16-year-old trans girl Alex, was in the audience. The police were there keeping everyone safe. Uh, they had, you know, a, a, a large um, area in between the two protests. Um, and then the show started and we were all excited and we were rip roaring ready to go. And um, Naomi did maybe one skit and the lights went out. Twelve months on, there have been no arrests, and the Moore County Sheriff's Office, which is leading the investigation, has announced no suspects except to say that whoever shut up the substations knew exactly what they were doing. Do you feel any safer now than you did a year ago? No. In fact, I felt safe up until then. And now I've been opened up to a whole new world of hate. Erica Street has lived in Moore County all her life. It wasn't the first time that we uh, saw Naomi in action. Just last summer, June, June of um, 2022, Sand Hills Pride um, sponsored a drag show in downtown Southern Pines. Naomi brought a couple of her friends. It was an open outdoor drag show. It was family oriented. There were kids there. It was a blast. And of course I took Alex, you know, it's like, who else am I going to take? And she dressed to the nine and she had her shades and her skirt and her heels on and she got to meet Naomi. Naomi is Naomi Dix, the Durham based drag artist invited by Sandhills Pride to produce the Downtown Divas show. Meeting Naomi was very meaningful for Alex. It felt like I was a part of something bigger. I was a part of the, I was a part of a community mm. that I hadn't really experienced before that. Cause it's like no one at my school and even at my school now was like super like talked about being queer, like other than my very close friends. And so just to feel like, I see you. Like when you complimented my hair, <laughs> like that was so yeah, important not, to me because yeah. that's just like a, of your hair but like yeah. it's like that my hair meant a lot to me yeah. as a trans woman who had been yeah. growing up my hair yeah one of the important reasons why i continuously kept bringing um drag and just not drag but education and queer education and trans education to this area was because of community like yourself I knew that those things existed and I knew that Moore County, I knew that Southern Pines had such almost like this vibrant community that had no sort of representation. Um, and I knew that by, by giving that representation in some shape or form, um, that it would make others within the community feel safe, but not only feel safe, but more than anything, feel heard and feel seen. And I wanted to make sure that if you felt as though you didn't have a voice, that I, as a community leader, at least gave you that voice. Dix was backstage when the lights went out. And I was like, wait a minute, now I sent this lighting cue and they got it right, but this is a little too long <laughs> and I'm not sure what's going on. Um, and um, I think shortly after that, I think a piece of my, a piece of me was like, you know what? I'm wondering if this has anything to do with um, the, the, the hatred that we're getting and that we got because of the show. And I think I went into protective mode of, I have like all of these people in here, you know, over 300 people in here. Um, I need to do something to make sure that they feel safe and that communication is open um, and that transparency is there and available. And um, I, that's when I went back on stage and I addressed the crowd. In that moment when you're sitting in the theater and everything is dark, were you afraid? I thought, oh, it's just one of those things. You know, the power's out. We all lit our phones up. We started singing. Uh, Naomi led us in song. I mean, it was it was an incredible moment. When I got scared is on the way home, when all of the traffic lights were out. And do you remember what that was like or what happened? Because this was, I mean, this, with, this was many days of no power. I couldn't think of anything other than like, 
What is going on? I, I, nothing is happening that is as it should be. This is, this is wrong, you know? Serena Sebring is executive director of the nonprofit Blueprint North Carolina, the largest coalition of grassroots groups in the state. She received word from her colleagues of the blackout early on the night of December 3rd and drove out to Moore County the next day to help. No street lights um, were working. There was no one directing traffic. It was very much an eerie scene with, you know, no power on in any of the houses that we passed as we came into town in some ways was a lesson to me about what happens in the case of a massive power outage like that. You know, that, that there were, um, in a rural county, you have to understand that the wells often operate with electricity, that the gas pumps that we, you know, think of as, uh, you know, not necessarily relying on electricity also do, um, that the hospital was on a backup generator, that there were, you know, just at every level, um, uh, real dangers associated with this event um, and, and a lot of confusion. People generally, even in Moore County, uh, the ones that came to the distribution center hadn't heard about a drag show. They didn't know that there was a controversy about a show or that, you know, this was in some way associated with a political um, uh, conflict. It was just their power was out suddenly in the middle of December um, and no information was coming from local authorities. Generations of U.S. service personnel have learned how to secure and also how to sabotage infrastructure. North Carolina has a huge active duty military presence and the eighth largest veteran population in the country. Moore County borders Fort Liberty, formerly Fort Bragg, home of the 82nd Airborne Division and the Army Special Forces Command. One former PSYOPs officer based there, U.S. Army Captain Emily Grace Rainey, was forced to resign after she led a busload of residents to Washington, D.C. to protest January 6th. A lead rabble-rouser against Naomi Dix's drag show, Rainey celebrated when, after weeks of pressure, an age limit was slapped on the event. Nonetheless, she called her supporters to stand with her outside the theater on the night of the performance. The lights went out just after the show started. Later that night, a post appeared on Grace Rainey's Facebook page, The power is out in Moore County and I know why. That earned Rainey a visit from the sheriff's office, apparently not to investigate, but to pray. Rainey posted about that, too. Elsewhere on Facebook, cheery pictures show Rainey friendly with Sheriff Fields, who declared at a press conference the next day that she was not a suspect in the attacks. Do you think there's a connection between the campaign against the drag show and the taking out of those power stations in Moore County? I think that there's at least a narrative connection. We all are awaiting the facts of what exactly happened, but what we do know, even now, is that violent white supremacist rhetoric was used before the show to oppose the show, that there was a call for a, a reaction to the to the drag show happening in community, and that the same people who put out that call after the power grid went down took credit for it. So I think we, we have to acknowledge that this is a real local domestic terrorist threat. They are predicting, calling for, and claiming credit for this act. A year on, citizens of Moore County are no longer in the dark, literally. However, when it comes to information about the substation attacks, they have been met with official silence. We asked law enforcement, including the Moore County Sheriff and government officials at all levels, to provide us with an update on the investigation. None would. Neither would Duke Energy, the multi-billion dollar energy holding company that operates in six states and serves more than eight million customers. This October, we visited one of the Duke Energy substations that was attacked. We're down a little dirt road. There's a chest high fence right there with the sign, Duke Energy, West End substation. But there's not a soul that we could talk to to ask permission or get information about this place. And there may be cameras, but there's no one stopping us from doing pretty much whatever we like right here. We reached one law enforcement officer, Southern Pines Police Chief Nick Polidori, on the phone as we were exploring the area with colleagues. Uh, have you talked to Moore County Sheriff? Yeah, well, he turned me down this morning. <laughs> 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 
I mean, it's uh, wild. This is I'll, a public I'll, I'll concern. I'll probably be the one turning you down as well. Oh. It's not the investigation. It's, it's the sheriff's office with the FBI. Yeah. Uh, and I, quite honestly, I've had no, we've had no interaction with Duke. Do you feel any more secure than you did a year ago? Um, I, I kind of know what you're getting at. I, I don't want to make your story because uh, I don't want to speak out of turn for Duke and for the sheriff's office and the FBI. What so about I just speaking really as a civilian whose lights went out? So I was working that night. I remember it. I bet it was frightening. It was um, a different event for us, that's for sure. That's for sure. Well, again, we would truly appreciate to be able to tell the people of Moore County that there has been some serious response to this and there's reason for them to sleep more soundly at night. Uh, I don't have any information of what Duke has or has not done, so I, I don't believe I'm the right person. To right, and you're leaving this in the hands of Duke Energy. Uh, it's not me leaving it in the hands. It's, uh, it's, it's things that I believe they are handling. Yeah. All right, well, I truly appreciate you talking to us, Chief. I, I, I really do appreciate it, and I don't envy your position, um, but there's a lot of people counting on you. I know that. I appreciate your time, Ms. Flanders. This place, the Pinhook, is a place of safety. It was founded to be exactly that by the country music artist Kim Register back in 2008. And ever since, well, it's become a celebrated haven for LGBTQI people and their art. We're here for the first ever presentation to an invited few of a drag opera response to the haters. Grace Nichols, a performer with the House of Cox, who performs regularly right here at the Pinhook, has been one of the driving forces behind that opera, along with Mab Segrist of Blueprint, North Carolina. I grew up overseas on American military bases, and uh, I didn't live in the U.S. until 2008, when my mother retired to southwest Georgia. And I, I had a really hard time in southwest Georgia. There is a a queer community there, um, but I still just felt really isolated, particularly as a person of color and um, a person sort of coming into my own transness. And so it felt like these intersections weren't always held or acknowledged um, the way that I experienced them here in Durham. So um, I moved from Southwest Georgia uh, up to here. So it's heaven for queer people in Durham, North Carolina? <laughs> Not all people would say that. Every place has its issues. I mean, navigating the intersections of identity are always hard. You know, we, um, ableism exists everywhere, classism exists everywhere. But here, at least, I think there's at least an, an effort to try. Let's try to figure out how to be better with and for each other. But for everything that you've just said, the queer community has also been under consistent attack Sorry. in North Carolina. We aren't the villains in this situation. Um, we have a right to exist and be performing and to what I love about drag is, is the joy that we bring not only to LGBT people but the whole community. So as a young, young trans person seeks courage and community after a nefarious attack on our drag show in their small rural town in North Carolina. Community members rally together to support one another and fight back against fascism. There's always a spirit of, of acceptance and celebration at our shows. So, you know, we shouldn't be scared to do that. And if people are trying to make us feel scared, then that's on them. Stage directions simply say lights up on Charlie in front of her vanity. She is being interviewed by a journalist. The journalist says, what is drag? Drag is an illusion. Delusions, audacity, possibility. Your truest self, most untrue self. Delightful contradiction. Drag is armor, war paint. You want to talk about strength? Heels, duct tape, wig, glue, eyelashes five pounds of hair clips on earrings, a corset, and a tuck into splits. And for whom? And for what? For y'all! Drag is service! Talk about serving, giving, living. Don't talk to me about strength. Serving, salvation, none of that. We don't need be saved. We save people. You want to talk about surviving in a world that wants you dead? then you can talk to me about strength. Talk to me about joy, 
about love, celebration. Talk to me about passion. Serena Sebring of Blueprint, North Carolina, was present at the opera reading. The drag opera is going to be a really powerful storytelling tool to help folks in Moore County to have conversations about what happened there and far beyond to educate people in all the counties of North Carolina about what threats uh, to community safety can look like and what healing and restoration uh, and, and power building can look like in its wake. We are talking about a great harm that happened here in North Carolina, but this is a national problem and not a new one. There are extremist groups, violent extremist groups like Adam Waffen and others who have been targeting the United States power grid for some years. They've produced a manual for how to take out these substations. And the reality is that two uh, substations taken out resulted in power gone for 45,000 households here. The right nine power stations taken out would wipe out the entire United States power grid for everybody. This is a domestic terrorist threat that people really need to be paying attention to. Back in Moore County, Erica Street says the events of last December were transformative. I feel like that was a turning point in our community, that entire show and that entire incident, because it really brought out two different sets of people. It brought out the lovers and it brought out the haters. The haters thought, oh, this is our opportunity. This is our foot in the door to really pound this county. And those haters have found a way to attack our youth through the school board and our communities and our schools. Infringing upon my rights as um, a human. It's infringing upon my rights And it was at that point and that uh, Alex and I spoke out at the school board um, when they wanted to pass the Parents' Bill of Rights. During the 2023 session, North Carolina lawmakers passed one bill increasing the penalties for damaging utility property and three anti-trans bills, denying medical care to trans youth, prohibiting trans youth from participating in school sports, and SB 49, a so-called Parents' Bill of Rights. Parents' Bill of Rights said to teachers that they must tell the parents if their child goes by different pronouns or by different names. And for kids who are just socially out, that is everything. That's how Alex started, you know? And, and just using her right pronouns and using her right name would light up her world, you know? Unfortunately, it's a very conservative county. The Parents' Bill of Rights was passed. And at that point, a couple of moms and I said we need to do something. And so we started the PFLAG. Alex testified against the Parents' Bill of Rights at a school board meeting. My name is Alex Lafferty and I know where things like this lead. History rhymes like bad poetry. I kept repeating, my name is Alex Lafferty and I'm a human being because that was what I thought was important. I thought that you can't keep telling the same people, oh, it's basic human rights when they don't see you as human. Do you feel like anything's changed as a response to what happened a year ago? I remember thinking, I, I have to start t speaking more. I have to start speaking out more. I have to start sticking up for me, myself, and the trans community more. Because that's what prevents things like this, is all of us thinking, I'm going to do more. Before this event, there was so much um, you know, this shouldn't happen and that shouldn't happen and we shouldn't have these people, you know, these drag artists coming here because, you know, they're, they're putting our children in danger and, you know, these people are not Christian and, you know, Naomi Dix is a demonic, you know, person and, you know, all of these things. And yet, when the lights went out, it didn't matter who was black, who was Latino, who was Asian, who was a person of color, it did not matter. It didn't matter if you were Catholic, if you were Baptist, if you were Christian, whatever that was, we were all in the same space, all in the same boat, which was we didn't have any power. We all are just one type of person in that moment, and we're all just trying to help each other. It takes a lot to scare a drag queen. 
But perhaps the rest of us could do with being just a little bit more afraid. Our society is facing very real threats, some of which can be identified even if they can't be specifically named. And every minute, every hour, every day that we allow ourselves to be distracted by fake threats, we do that at our peril. As the people of Moore County, North Carolina discovered, when the lights go out, they go out for everybody. And they leave us and our democracy in darkness. From North Carolina, I'm Laura Flanders for The Laura Flanders Show. Till the next time, stay kind, stay curious, and thanks for joining me. For more on this episode and other forward-thinking content, subscribe to our free newsletter for updates, my commentaries, and our full uncut conversations. We also have a podcast. It's all at lauraflanders.org.